Welcome back to the Team Nerd Herd podcast, where our best advice is if you want to do it right, collect what you like. Now, Team Nerd Herd, do not adjust your YouTube channel. I know you're looking for top picks of the week, but that's at 7 o'clock. We are dropping that new segment. Your boy, Hip Hop Simi underscore comics underscore collectibles is doing that, dropping the mic review for you. Now, what that is, is I'm going to go ahead and give you my specific picks, my indie picks, my pile of books that are just mountain high and some of the stuff that's on my radar. But before we go on, I want to give a huge shout out to Patrick Foreman and Brian Hawkins for allowing me this opportunity to get a preview of Black Cotton 2 that will be out this Wednesday for your new comic book pick of the weeks. Scout Comics, you got to pick it up and I'm going to go ahead and give you that rundown. But before we do, Let's go ahead and lead a little roll call. What's going on, Alonzo? My brother, how's the weekend? Oh, my God. It's fantastic. And for all you mothers out there, happy Mother's Day. Um, definitely lots of love That's to fun. you. Uh, appreciate all the hard work and everything that we as children put you through. So thank you very much for all the things, for everything. Um, this is Alonzo, a.k.a. Comics and Pops. I am your comic book nerd, and I am your pop culture fanatic. And I am here to listen to Steve drop this this review on Black Cotton 2. I mean, I am so excited for it and looking forward to um, what he has to say. So uh, over to you, Steve. Oh, well, thank you so much. And before we go ahead and get into this review, let's go ahead and get a little rundown down the chat. I want to say shout outs to my man, the anime, et cetera, or I like to hear it as exoteric because that sounds more anime-ish to me. <laughs> and then something wrong, you know, something right is going to go down. So with that being said, much love. Thank you guys for rolling with me on this new venture. So let's go ahead and get it started. Uh, before I want to go into Co Black Cotton 2, I want to go ahead and give you a little rundown and a reason why you want to buy Black Cotton 2. Shout out to HKA Wifey 420 because we're going to go ahead and circle back to issue number one. Now, issue number one's been out. If you guys have not read this and you want to read issue one, you guys can hold mute me. But I'm going to go ahead and give a little rundown for the folks that are in that group chat right now. Let's so do it. the social order, it has taken a flip. All right. And this is the most interesting thing. I think it's very boldish. It's very awesome that Brian Hawkins and Patrick Foreman would, you know, kind of shed light to this topic that we're living in now. You know, this, this dire straits that our world is in. And I think it's a real bullish move. It's great to highlight what we are really living and it's best that it's highlighted in comic books. It really enhances the experience. It brings you to new experiences and opens your mind into so much more. So with that being said, we know the social order is mixed in. We have an opening to a white female that is walking down a suburb. It is dark. Um, and it, the colors, there's no colors. It's black and white and grays. I will get circled back on why I love that, but it opens up to that scene. And she's walking down a suburban alley. You have a cop by the name of Zion Cotton, who we find out in the next panel. Okay. He's walking down. He sees suspicious, not suspicious activity, but he sees that he wants to halt her and pull her over, kind of question her. And he's saying, ma'am, please halt. And it's coming from his vantage point. So you're seeing his side of what he's seeing. You're not seeing her and what her scenario is. She turns around what looks to be like she's having her hands up, but she's turning towards him, and in an instant, she is shot. End panel. You know, that is a very intense scene to open up to. Wow, it, it sounds like it. So that, that all happened in issue one? It all happened in issue one, and um, you know, in, in, in the, you know meet, the meat of it all, it opens up to him being in the newspaper. So he's already hitting you know, the newspapers, it's out there. People are enraged. There's protesting. And the father, by the name of Elijah Cotton, he is a billionaire to what's called Black Cotton. Uh, we do not know what that is, but I'm hoping that we're going to find out soon. But he is enraged. You know, um, he's a billionaire. I think he wants to keep everything on a tight lid. He wants to make sure that it doesn't exploit things. And it, I think it really looks bad in his scenario. And he's not really thinking about his son, of course. He's really you know, just upset and wanting to tie up the loose ends. So, I mean, within this, oh, what's going on? My man, no good comics. Azora's Tigers over in Twitch say what? You know, he's watching those video game reviews, my brother. Azora's Tigers last night. Ooh, grail, grail. Melted my face right off. Okay. 
So we're going to go ahead and circle back and get you really nice and warm and fuzzy. So um, Sister Kua is asked to kind of tie up these loose ends with her brother. And she's trying to hunt him down. Brother Zion is nowhere to be found. You know, in the in the midst of this mother, you know, Mrs. Cotton is flying home. She's aware of the scenario. She is not happy as well. They are really trying to put a tight lid on this, and she's going to do the unthinkable. The end of this issue, issue one, ends with her going to the hospital, who we find the White family is known as the Nightingales. And she's going to extend her apologies. But not only that, she's also going to tie up these loose ends and to you know, uh, put light of this subject. What's it going to take for you guys to not say anything? And it ends in that panel. Wow. So, so that was issue one. So we're, we're talking like the people are people of color, like ourselves are in this like position of strength. Yes. Yes. And wow. Wow. So they were, they're like you mentioned, right? They're the one percenters. They're the one percenters and, uh, they are the billionaire family. And uh, I mean, I think there's a lot of expectations. I think they have a legacy when they talk about black cotton. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that is a mantra that I do believe that uh, Brian Hawkins said um, in our interview. If you guys have not checked that interview, go back and check that Brian Hawkins interview with Alonzo and your boy Rogue's Law. It was amazing. We love Brian Hawkins. For sure. Hey, you know what you mentioned too, like um, uh, the absence of color, the black and white. You Do you want to get into some detail about that? Uh, definitely. I think it's an amazing thing to have done. Um, there is a little bit of description of why that happened. But when I first got it, before even interviewing Brian, I wanted to have that comic. I wanted to read it. I wanted to get the dialogue broken out. And what I saw immediately was there is no color lines, right? They want to make sure that they get you invested into the character. They want to suck you into the storyline. And it nailed it. It's exactly what happened. I was in for the the reading of the story. And the other thing is, you know, like when you look at black and white, there's a lot of details that go in. There might be something missing in, in your peripheral. Um, and then they also use kind of like hues of gray. And I think when you look at it, uh, you think of black and white, but then there's that gray area, right, of what's going on in society. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a great play on what they did with this with this comic book black and white and then within the gray area so it really allows you to you know look at it from your vantage point and and get a lot from what you're reading i mean i think uh that's the best part of art oh for sure man it sounds it sounds great it sounds great so uh for 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 those new readers that haven't even picked up black cotton uh would you recommend this book I definitely re would recommend this if you're looking for something new. I know, you know, we're we're a lot into Marvel and DC universe. I mean, the movies are coming out, but if you want a different direction, we know that indie titles are killing it right now, and different publishers have been killing it. I know Scout Comics have put out several titles. Um, this is one of them to read. I think it's a different direction. I think it's uh, highlighting something that's a, a very fragile topic in today's society, but bringing it to a reader, bringing it to new readers as well, because uh, we're so caught up with our own beliefs that, you know, I think a comic book can really hit home. It allows you to come back to a hobby that we all love, right? And you're taking it in from an outside perspective and you're getting to see somebody in Brian Hawkins that is very, you know, that has this platform to be able to write it. And I think that's so great of him. I think it's bullish. I think it's strong. I think it says a lot about who he is. Uh -huh. You know, and I think character is what you do when the lights are off. And I think that really speaks to what Brian Hawkins and Patrick Foreman are doing. They want to shed some light on a subject, but they want to make it interesting. And I think Brian, with knowing Brian, you know, he always, there's always more to the story. The, uh, you know what? I, I thank you for explaining. Like I'm, I'm, I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I, 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 I want more. Uh, and, and so oh, you're gonna you get were more. lucky enough, right? You were lucky oh, yeah. enough to get issue number two. Oh yeah. So um, yeah, Brian emailed me, reached out to me and said, Hey Steve, would you uh, do the honor of uh, doing a review before it comes out? And I told him I would be honored to read issue two. I already uh, had pre-ordered it. I got that uh, awesome cover in the background of him, a uh, Zion working that bag with that left. And I was given issue two. So I was able to read it. Shout out to my man, Louis Shadow Rabbit. Did you see his Glenn Sculpture last night? Or his clay clay sculpture, ooh, it was beautiful. 
But so I was given this opportunity. And again, huge shout out to Scout Comics, Patrick Foreman, Brian Hawkins, and the team. Much love to you guys. Thank you so much for interesting me to be able to review issue number two. So, Alonzo, you ready for issue two? I'm ready. Hit it. Hit it. Okay. Hit it. Drop so, that mic, man. Drop that mic. Let me. All right. Let's drop that mic. And then you're going to hear. And then I'm going to walk out like sexual chocolate. Now, <laughs> issue two opens up to who we know now is Lizzie Nightingale. She is the white woman that got shot by Zion Cotton. And you're seeing her, like, you don't know this yet, but you're seeing her dream, right? You're seeing what happened that night in her vantage point. She's at a convenience store. There is a, a black convenience store owner that is very smug because you got this white man saying, oh, $2 for a beef jerky? And um, he's like, hmm. And then he just kind of hazes over. Uh, Nightingale tells her, keep the pennies. And you see her vantage point. She's walking in this dark alleyway back home. And you see zion tracking her down and telling her hold on wait and in her vantage point she says i don't have my wallet and her hands are in her pocket so she's being told to pause and as she turns around her hands are up and that's what happens she's shot and, she, and all of a sudden you see her awoke awaken in the hospital bed where we are closing out that first issue where she overhears mama cotton talking about what's it going to take to get this settled. And you hear the Nightingales are very irate. Um, they are, you know, almost in the midst of, you know, like a huge argument. The lawyers there, they said, you know, we do not want to talk to you. Please leave us. We are worried about our daughter and we will see you in court. We will have your son's badge and we want him in jail. So, so Steve, I, you know what, I'm, I'm liking where this is going. I, I like the fact that we're we're seeing a different perspective. We're looking at a different character's like point of view. Mm -hmm. um, I, I I like I I like where this is going. I like where yeah. this is going. You know, we're seeing two perspectives instead of just the one the one percent. Yes. So I do that. Keep keep it keep it coming, man. This so, is great. So you know, issue two unpacks a lot of vantage points. So you're getting Lizzie Nightingale and that pan in that panel that scene. The next scene, we open up to Zion. He is unraveling, you know, with uh, great pressure, I imagine. You know, he shot somebody. He's put his family at risk, the black cotton and their mantra and what they represent. He is, um, no, he understands that he is, his father is irate. You know, there's dialogue between him and his sister in issue one. But he is opening up to sparring with his um, counterpart in the police station because that's where he's held up. He can't go anywhere. He's gone in underground. There's protesters in rage that want him and he's sparring with his partner and he knocks his partner down and he says, are you okay? And you kind of see the frustration and the stress in his face as he knocks his, you know, partner out and there's a scuffle, you know, there's an, you know, exchange that goes that's involved and his partner calls him black privileged and all hell breaks loose. So you see a lot of that, um, emotion you see a lot of that stress in zion and what he's going through um and the walls are kind of caving in on him so you see that distress in his face wow i just that term black privilege i'm like like wow yeah. um dude I, I i i'm getting goosebumps man seriously this is wow okay yeah and and in that instant you're seeing you know him leave you know he finally leaves with his sister you know, they have dialogue together, you know, like he's trying to make what's right. He knows that it, things are bad. But I think when he's looking at it from his point of view, it's like, it's race. This is not, this is a, a I'm sorry, it just happened. You know, my, like it, I didn't do it on purpose. It, it's not a racial thing, but the Cotton family are like, it's more than that though. It is a racial thing. And you're putting our business at risk and at our mantra at risk, we need to tie this up. You know, you shooting somebody because you, we're scared is not going to apologize for that. And it's not going to take away from that. We need to think of the bigger picture. So it's just so detailed. It's so um, the writing is so rich. And um, I really think because we're living in that situation now, mm -hmm. it really makes it intensifies what we're really looking at here. And I think it has legs. I think it's something that, you know, is in a great direction to creativity alone, but also just the way to flip the script was just uh, a beautiful thing. Wow. So how, how would you rate the second issue then? Oh my God. The second issue is going to get me to issue three because um, issue three kind of closes out. I don't want to give 
the whole thing away. I want you guys to buy it. I want you guys to support Scout Comics, Brian Hawkins, Patrick Foreman, and the team for Black Cotton. But it opens up to the worst, you know. Like, um, you uh, again. We talk about Zion unraveling. Things are kind of in the midst of hell right now, you know. The um, owner Elijah, father, has has dialogue with the wife as well, even. But the fourth panel ends with you're seeing Elijah um, in what you think um, he may take his life. Um, pans out to a call to his sister and and the officer saying, "Hey, Q." Q, uh, we have something to tell you. And you see Q say, oh, my God, don't tell me. So and it, I, it I, need to pause you right there, Steve. I need to pause you right there, man. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm digging it. And I can tell, like, you're so invested in these characters. And that's definitely a tribute to what Brian brings to, to this book. Uh, can you tell me, like, who's your favorite character right now? My favorite character, actually, I think is uh, Zion. You know, like, um, because he's going through what, what, um, what he's done, you know, and, um, you're seeing it from his vantage point. He has remorse, um, but there's more to it. There, there's just a little more that there, that's not being explained. Shout out to Bricks, the iron geek, my man. Um, and it, it's, a, it's just an amazing, amazing, um, read. And I, it's a real powerful read. And I could see from his vantage point where he's coming from, um, Maybe because we've already we're already in the situation where I know what's going on uh, in front of my eyes. I wouldn't think that way, right? Um, mm -hmm. For what the circumstances are, but in this story, it's like I'm seeing him in a ravel. He doesn't seem like he's losing it, aside from him, you know, like uh, in the sparring session. Um, but you know, like this this story is amazing, man. I mean, it's just so self aware. So so obviously, based on your emotions and how you're talking about this with such passion. You want people to put this on their pull list. You want people to buy this book. Am I right? Definitely. Definitely. I would highly recommend it. I know, shout out to my man, Roger, from Three Men in a Basement. I know Keep It Throw was also reading this. I know a lot of people are on this in the indie community, too. I know Sparks have probably dabbled in it. Caroline, maybe. Um, but this this is one that you got to pick up. I mean, issue one was a great read. I know issue one is uh, is kind of, it's it's real sensitive subject. But I think if, if you're looking at it as a fan of comic books, you got to be, you got to diversify yourself. You got to read everything and have a real good eye for everything. So um, definitely put it on your poll. Issue two is nothing short of amazing because knowing Brian Hawkins, uh, we've talked about this. I know Alonzo and I know JR felt this way and we've told them ourselves, we hate you for leaving us dangling. And that's exactly what happens in issue two is you get that dangling carrot and you're like, oh. and I, I love Brian for that. I just think he's a, he, he just has a way and a foundation to grab the reader and to say, come with me to this journey. I'm going to make sure at the very end, it's going to be worth your while. <laughs> wow. Okay. So if, if, if you could sum up, I mean, oh my God, I mean, it's just so many things coming out of, of like your descriptions for, for issue number two, if you can sum it, sum it up in like five words, five words. Um, how would you, how would you sum up this, this, this issue? I mean, it, again, it is so much like you have so much detail coming from you so much passion about it. Like I, I, I want to know, I mean, I'm, I'm hooked hook, on man. every single thing that you're saying, but you know, for people that are on the, in the chat, you know, for people are checking this thing out on the rewind, you know, give us, give us a quick, like five words about issue number two, five words, right. And I'm dropping the mic right here. It's going powerful, self-awareness, keen to the eye, artwork is on point and i'm gonna go ahead and say it's creative that's more than five words but i'm gonna give it to you man i mean that's <laughs> it like I, I i don't even know what to say man i mean seriously it's just I, so much passion man I, I you really must love these this story you must really love issue one issue two um like yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm picking it up steve i'm picking it up Definitely it put it on your poll. If you, I know Scout Comics, you, you got to order through them, guys. Some LCSs will have it, so definitely pick it up. Um, I know Golden Apple. Shout out to Golden Apple because that's where I bought my um, incentive. It's that one in 15. 
uh, Zion hitting the bag, which looks to be like Obama, but um, also issue two, pick that issue two up, guys. Issue three, I, I guarantee you, Brian will make it worth your while. He's going to open up and unpack uh, even more as he goes along because issue one was a great opening. It was a great way to start. Issue two just explodes into chaos and different panels, different vantage points and different scenes. So it really leaves you wanting to know what, what's going to happen in issue two. What's going to happen in issue three? So see, and, and shout out to HK Wifey. Thank you. I'm, I'm not the only person here that can see it like in his face, how passionate he is about this book. So, I mean, I'm glad it's translating over that you guys can see it. I mean, this is, this Thank is awesome, guys. man. Yeah, man. Yeah, definitely. I mean, this isn't the first, there's more to come. We will be reviewing more of uh, some of my polls, but also, Hey guys, if you guys think I should be reading a specific series or a specific issue that you guys felt that was an amazing read, drop it in the comments. Go ahead and hit the likes and the subscribes. Definitely let me know. I want to make sure that I'm getting out in the community and uh, I'm a part of this community. I've seen a lot of your guys' posts. I'm aware of what you guys read. I love that you guys read it and the time that you guys have for it. Um, I try to get my Sundays and Saturdays. I know Alonzo does too for us to be able to read and to be able to get more things to come. So drop those comments, man. Let me know. All right. And with that. You want to close yeah. it out? You close it out, Steve. If you want to do it right, collect what you like, y'all. Thanks for rolling with us and peace and good at you. Sound great.